Welcome back to Revealing the Truth, where we cover the headlines, the heartlines, and biblical truth. I'm your host, the Reverend Rabbi Eric Walker, and we're talking this morning about deliverance and especially about fear. Yeshua recognized that his disciples had times where they battled with fear, as we all do. Fear is a powerful emotion that the devil can take advantage of in our lives. Fear is an emotion that makes us extremely vulnerable to spiritual attack. Look at the words of Yeshua when speaking to his disciples in Luke 12, verses 4 and 5, and in verse 7. And I say to you, my friends, do not be afraid of those who kill the body, and after that have no more that they can do. But I will show you whom you should fear. Fear him who, after he is killed, has power to cast into hell. Yes, I say to you, fear him. But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Do not fear, therefore, you are more valuable than many sparrows. These verses show how God is watching over you and me continually. Fear is linked with a lack of both faith and the fear of the Lord. When we are afraid, we're not trusting God and often fearing something or someone other than God. Fear is one of the main weapons that the enemy uses to torment us and to dictate feelings and behaviors to us. God wants to deliver everyone who struggles with fear. When God's people are free from fear, they can walk in power, authority, and victory. Multiple fears begin with lies that the enemy has told us, which shows why the devil is called the father of lies. He tries to handicap us with fear because he knows that the truth will both set and make us free. The devil uses the natural emotion of fear against us to make us feel helpless in resisting him. He wants us to doubt the Lord and ourselves because it makes him appear stronger than he really is. The devil discredits God in every way he can, whispering lying accusations to us about God, as he did to Adam and Eve. One of the ways that he instills fear is by telling us lies about who we are and what we're facing. He whispers, look at your finances. You're not, you're not going to make it. You didn't give enough to God, so he's punishing you. That's a lie. Another lie that the enemy commonly whispers is God will never forgive you for that sin. Another lie. Fear has been defined in an acrostic of false evidence appearing real or feeling everything and responding. Fear makes you think that the worst will happen. He holds up a magnifying glass to make things appear larger than they may actually be. Fears are real feelings that we cannot de deny. All of us have felt butterflies in our stomachs at times, the nervousness that comes when we have to give a speech or compete in an event or public speaking. The adrenaline of our body, produce, our body produces helps us deal with stressful situations, but it also makes us feel sick. But this is a kind of good fear that helps us be more alert and to perform better. However, if we allow the enemy to deceive us with lies and we do not submit our fears to the fear of God, we can be open to a spirit of fear. In 1 Timothy 2, 1, verse 7, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind that this spirit intimidates us. It keeps us from being bold and courageous. A person with a sound mind makes good judgments, has, has discipled thought patterns, and has the ability to make right decisions. This person does not expect the worst, worst but the best because his hope is in God. The Lord wants us to be completely secure in his love, protection, and in his provision. Look at the wisdom that stated by King Solomon in Proverbs 14.26. In the fear of the Lord there is strong confidence and his children will have a place of refuge. We are to revere and fear God and see him as our only constant refuge. But it is completely different to be in, a bond, in bondage to a spirit of fear. The only fear we are to have is the fear of offending God. When we fear God, he will be our refuge in time of temptation, and he will begin to hate sin as he does, and by God's grace, it will be removed from our lives. In Hebrews 12, 28 and 29, Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. For our God is a consuming fire. A key to overcoming fear is finding the root of where it began. If you are tormented by fear, ask the Holy Spirit to show you the root reason. Get completely alone with God for a time of letting him search your entire life concerning any and every fear. 
A tormenting fear could be due to traumatic experiences you may have gone through or because of horror movies you may have watched. Watching horror movies can affect a person deeply, leaving wounds that can only be healed by praying for the Lord to heal those memories. Some fears have generational roots that may be broken through prayer or of generational transference. Now that we are on Messiah Yeshua, our bloodline lineage goes back to the second Adam, Yeshua, not to the first Adam, who sinned in the garden. Through prayer, each of us can sever our natural bloodline inheritance by declaring out loud, your new bloodline lineage in Messiah Yeshua. You are a new creation and Messiah made altogether new. When the Lord shows you a root cause of a fear, take that to him in prayer and even ask him how to pray. Two of the greatest entries or ways to fear are trauma and guilt. In trauma, fear can become a stronghold in our lives when we experience trauma. Being in an accident, witnessing violence, or having other traumatic experience can make us vulnerable to a spirit of fear. For example, a young woman had been bitten by two dogs as a child, so naturally she was afraid of dogs as she grew up. She then begged God to heal that memory and to free her from that fear. Today, she's no longer afraid of dogs. If you've had a traumatic experience and would like someone to pray for you, go to a spiritual leader that you trust who will pray with you. We serve a God who can heal us today from what happened yesterday. Hebrews 13 and 8 says God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He can heal and free us so that we no longer live in the present in response to something that's happened in the past. As you know, in this program, we have spoken with several authors and individuals on the subject of PTSD. And in my conversations, we discuss whether or not it is a malady, uh, an affliction, something that people can or will be healed of. And when I introduced the idea, the concept that this might be a spirit of trauma, most of those who have been talking with me about PTSD are looking at the clinical aspects of it, and I tend to look at the spiritual aspects of it. I believe it is a spirit of trauma, and that as people of prayer, we can deal with the spirit of trauma. We can anoint with oil. We can lay hands on those that are suffering and bring them deliverance. It may come in stages. It may come in time, but I believe that this can happen. The other gateway to fear is guilt. When we do something wrong, we feel guilty. We fear exposure and punishment. We may fear disappointing people or public humiliation. So we easily lie to cover our sin, but then we fear our lie will be discovered. We may fear that God will not forgive us. Sometimes we're unable to forgive ourselves. Girls or women who have had an abortion are often afraid that others will find out. So they keep it a secret, living with a hidden area of darkness in their lives. There's a fear concerning the rejection and disapproval of others. Shame and fear begin to fill the mind and emotions. Come to the light and bring all sin out into the open. The light of God is our pathway to forgiveness and freedom. In John 3, 19 to 21, and this is the condemnation that light has come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone that does evil hates the light, neither it comes to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that does truth comes to the light that his deeds may be made manifest that they are wrought in God. Well, what do we do with the guilt that causes fear? Well, if you have sinned, confess it honestly before God. You will not have peace until you've acknowledged and confessed your transgression. Yeshua paid the penalty for your sin. You can be righteous before God once you are forgiven or committed to walk in the light. If you feel guilty because of falling into temptation continually, talk to someone you trust who will pray with you. Do not try to fight this battle alone. Sexual temptations are especially hard to overcome. You need to be accountable to at least one other person who can help pray you through into healing and victory. You can repent, change, make restitution if needed. If you stole something, return it. If you have a secret habit, get rid of everything associated with it. If you are addicted to pornography, throw away the magazines and DVDs. If you are serious about getting free, have a friend put restrictions in your preference section on your internet browsers. 
so that you cannot change them. Eating disorders are common today, so try to eat with others who can hold you accountable to eat wisely. Face the consequences if you are put under some disciplinary measure, accept the discipline without becoming angry or rebellious. Receive God's forgiveness by faith, then forgive yourself. Yeshua recognized that his disciples had times where they battled with fear, as we all do. Fear is a powerful emotion that the devil can take advantage of in our lives. Fear is an emotion that makes us extremely vulnerable to spiritual attack. Look at the words of Yeshua when speaking to his disciples in Luke 12, verses 4 and 5, and then in verse 7. And I say to you, my friends, do not be afraid of those who kill the body, and after that have no more that they can do, but I will show you whom you should fear. Fear him who, after he is killed, has power to cast into hell. Yes, I say to you, fear him. But the very hairs of your head are numbered. Do not fear, therefore, for you are more valuable than many sparrows. These verses show how God is watching over you and me continually. When we're afraid, we're not trusting God. <clears throat> and often fearing something other than God. It's the main weapon that the enemy uses to torment us and dictate feelings and behavior. God wants to deliver everyone who struggles with fear. When God's people are free from fear, they can walk in power, authority, and victory. Multiple fears begin with lies that the enemy has told us, which shows why the devil is called the father of lies. He tries to handicap us with fear because he knows that the truth will both set and make us free. This is how the enemy works. This is how he operates. This is how he actually causes us to stumble. The devil discredits in every way he can, whispering lying accusations to us. And we must overcome this. We must stop this dead in its tracks. We must know that God himself has been overcome. God will forgive. God will pour out his spirit upon you. A person with sound mind make good, makes good judgments, has disciplined thoughts and <clears throat> thought patterns and has the ability to make right decisions. This person does not expect the worst but the best because his hope is in God. The Lord wants us to be completely secure in his love, protection, and his wisdom. In Proverbs 14, 26, in the fear of the Lord, there's strong confidence, and his children will have a place of refuge. We're to revere and fear God and see him as our constant refuge. But it's completely different to be in bondage to a spirit of fear. We need to look at this and look at this clearly, that we might understand this in a very clear way. We must know that God is working for us. We have to find the root of it. We have to look at what's causing it. We have to get completely alone with God for a time of letting him search our entire lives concerning any and every fear. A tormenting fear can <clears throat> grab a hold of us. A tormenting fear can make it so that we cannot function without being in fear. We must understand this in a way that we bind it. If we've sinned, we must go to God. We must face the consequences. We must repent. And we must know that it's the Lord who is the author of truth. It is the Lord who is giving us the, giving us the power. It's so interesting that in the Bible, there are only three types of love which are named. Eros, pathos, and agape. And it seems so interesting that there are, in fact, so many, many names for fear. When we look at all these names for fear, we begin to realize that fear is something that grips us. It may surprise you, or maybe not, that there are so many things that we have a great deal of fear about. Let me share some of those with you. We have a fear of 
Hold on one second, and I'm going to look at those fears. After I edit, there we go. Here are some of my favorite fears. Arachibutrophobia, the fear of peanut butter sticking to the roof of our mouth. Now, you may laugh at that, but there are doctors who have actually treated patients for this. There is ecclesiophobia, a fear of church. There's actually papaphobia, a fear of the Pope. A Judeophobia, a fear of Jews. I know that many of you have your own fears. As a society, we have glorified fear and terror. There are almost 175 times as many names for fear as there are for love. Now, we know that in tradition, Jewish tradition especially, names bring life to that which we name, and so we've brought life to each and every one of those fears. In fact, Job wrote, What I have feared the most has come upon me. What I dreaded has happened to me. I have no peace, no quieted, quietness. I have no rest, but only turmoil. Job is saying that which he feared the most had come upon him. How often are people gripped in fear over the health or finances or their finances only to have that which they fear the most come to pass? Fear consumes us, and fear is the point man for all other spirits. It's the doorkeeper, the usher that holds the door open for all other demons to enter into our lives. We become so afraid of everything that we have panic attacks, night terrors, anxiety attacks. We even have a condition called phobophobia, which is a fear of phobias. Psalm 27, 4 says, One thing I ask of the Lord, this is what I seek, that I might dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. For in the day of trouble he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his tabernacle and set me high upon a rock. Then my head will be exalted above the enemies who surround me. At his tabernacle will I surface with shouts of joy. I will sing and make music to the Lord. Isaiah 43 says, But now this is what the Lord says. He who created you of Jacob, he who formed you of Israel. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. For I am the Lord, your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. In Isaiah 51 and 12, he says, I, even I, am he who comforts you. Who are you that you should fear mortal men, the sons of men who are but grass, that you forget the Lord your maker, who stretched out the heavens and laid the foundations of the earth, that you live in constant terror every day because of the wrath of the oppressor who is bent on destruction? For where is the wrath of the oppressor? The cowering prisoners will be soon set free. They will not die in their dungeon, nor will they lack bread. For I am the Lord your God who churns up the sea so that its waves roar. The Lord Almighty is his name. I have put my words in your mouth and covered you with the shadow of my hand. We know that God is love and whoever lives in love lives in God and God in him. This is the passage in John, 1 John, that tells us that in this way love is made complete among us so that we will have confidence. Yes, confidence on the day of judgment. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not perfect in love. When we look at God, do we see a God who punishes or a God who loves? Do we look at the same God that sent us our Messiah, who poured out his life for us that we might have freedom from bondage to sin, freedom from bondage to this earth? Jesus declares to the disciples in Luke 10, 18 and Luke 10, 19, he says, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. That means Satan has fallen from heaven. His powers have been reduced to that of this earth. In the day of his overcoming, the day of his treachery, the day of his running to and fro across this earth, are rapidly coming to an end where he will be bound for a thousand years and ultimately destroyed and thrown into a lake of fire. But in the meantime, we have been given the authority <clears throat> to trample on snakes and scorpions and overcome all the power of the enemy. 
nothing whatsoever will harm us. But he goes on to say, however, do not rejoice that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. Second Timothy said, God did not give us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power, of love, and self-discipline. So do not be ashamed to testify about our Lord or ashamed of me as prisoner, but join with me in suffering for the gospel by the power of God who has saved us and called us to a holy life. Not because of anything that we have done, but because of his own purpose and grace. This grace was given to us in Messiah Yeshua before the beginning of time. But it's now been revealed through the appearing of the Messiah 2,000 years ago who has destroyed death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. And of this gospel I was appointed a herald and an apostle, a teacher. This is why I am suffering as I am, yet I am not ashamed, because I know whom I have believed and am convinced that he is able to guard what I have entrusted to him for that day. What you heard from me keep as the pattern of sound teaching with faith and love in Messiah Yeshua. Guard the good deposit that was entrusted to you, guard it with the help of the Holy Spirit who lives in you. And remember from 1 Timothy 2 and 11, here is a trustworthy saying, if we died with him, we will also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. If we disown him, we will also, he will also disown us. If we are faithless, he will remain faithful or he cannot disown us. This is God's word on fear. This is God's word on deliverance. That we have this power, we have this authority, we have this ability, we have this strength. <clears throat> we have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. We have the power and the authority given to us by God that all we have to do is use it to draw upon the wellsprings of the Spirit. The very Spirit that hovered over the deep in Genesis, the very Spirit that God spoke through And in this way, he gives us power to speak through the anointing of the Holy Spirit. We can look in that mirror, and we can speak to those fears, and we can tell them, be gone. The fear of authority, the fear of disease, the fear of discomfort, the fear of others. A poverty mentality, a fear of lack, uh, disproportionate concern about your health. You know the guidance you're given in this life and that is to eat healthy, to take care of yourself for your body is the temple of the Lord and we are to offer it as a living sacrifice to God. And that is our spiritual act of worship. We don't offer up a temple that is riddled with fear and tormented. For almost all of the diseases of the stomach have to do with fear. The Hebrew says, Hazak, Hazak, Venit, Hazek. Be strong, be strong, be strengthened. Be strengthened in the knowledge of the Lord. Be strengthened in the knowledge of his word. Be strengthened by faith that you have joined together with the one who overcomes the world. His name is Yeshua. His name is Jesus. And if you have not accepted his plan, God's plan for your life, if you struggle with fear and have not released or relinquished your life to him, then I want to encourage you to do so right now. Say yes to him. Say yes to his plan of salvation. Say yes to his plan of forgiveness. And walk in the power and the authority and the anointing of the Holy Spirit to become an overcomer and stand in eternity by, 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 by his right hand. We'll be right back.